everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to check out my website listed down below. It's CorinneBlackstone.com. You can find lots of cool stuff over there like free SVGs, you can find all my affiliate links, and you can sign up for my free newsletter. I post lots of fun things in that newsletter that you don't want to miss out on. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do some things with this LED bag from 143 Vinyl. One of the things that I love about this bag is that it lights up. It's so cool and it's so fun. This is a great thing that you can use for Halloween, but I also really like to use it for other things as well. I have made these for my friends for high school sporting events, major league sporting events, and even a pride parade. So these are really fun and the colors change. There's a ton of different color options. It flashes. It also can cycle through the colors in a couple of different speeds. So there's a lot that you can do. This bag is really fun. But I'm going to show you how to make interchangeable designs for your bag. This is something that anybody can do. It's very, very easy and really fun. It only takes a few supplies. I'll list everything that we are going to use down below, but you can save 5% at 143 Vinyl by using code Corinne, so you don't want to miss out on that. You can use that anytime, but we are going to use some StarCraft SD. We are going to use some printable StarCraft Vinyl. We are going to use the LED bag and some transparency sheets. So I'll have everything linked down below to make it easy for you to make this craft. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for we are going to make a bunch of designs for these LED bags and we're going to make them so they're interchangeable. That way you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you can still use your LED bag for a bunch of different events. So what I'm going to do is upload some of our designs first because we're just going to do it all at once. I'm going to click upload and then click upload image. I've already unzipped all of our designs and I like the drag and drop method to upload my images. So what I'm going to do is go to my folder and I'll just start with this one first. This one I would use for more like if I was going on like a girls weekend or something. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop the image into my Cricut design space. All I'm going to do now is just click upload. Then I'm going to upload my next design that I want to do. And as I've uploaded them, I'm just going to go ahead and close the folder. So again, we're just going to go ahead and drag and drop. And then we have this cool bat. I just thought he'd be really fun for Halloween as well. I'm going to go ahead and upload him. Click upload again. I'll close that file. And then I'm going to do one of the ones out of the pride bundle. And you can just choose whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. It's your choice. It's your design. But I thought this rainbow would be really fun and super colorful. So we're going to do the little love rainbow. And then we're going to do a print then cut one as well. So I'm going to upload an image. And then I'm going to use one out of this pastel goth clip art. And you're just going to go into your clip art. And it's going to bring up all these different cool images. I really thought one of these would be so fun on this bag or you could do multiples. It's really up to you and the way you want to do it. So I think I kind of really like this one or maybe even like this. So you can just choose whatever one you want to do and you could do it so that it matches your costume or your design or whatever you want. Now because this isn't an SVG, we do need to select complex, click continue and then just click continue again and make sure you save this as a print then cut image and click upload. Now, like I said, we're just going to save ourselves some time and do them all at once. Now, I will say if you're a beginner, doing it one at a time might be a little bit easier for you. But since I've done this a lot, I'm just going to click all of them and click Add to Canvas. Now, this might take a minute because these files can be a little bit big. Once they've all loaded into Cricut Design Space, the first thing that I'm going to resize is going to be this giant ball. So with this, this is going to be our print and cut and the width that we can make it and the height that we can make it is limited to 6.75 wide by 9.25 high. So I'm simply just going to change the width to 6.75 and that's as large as we can go with this one. So this one is done, ready to go. I'm just going to move it over. Now we are putting this on eight and a half by 11 size sheets of clear transparency film. I like the transparency film over the acetate just because I have to cut the acetate down and this I think will work fine. So I'm just going to make these pretty much as big as I can go with our page because I want it to take up a lot of room. So I think that's a really good size for this one. 
And then we have this super fun bat. Now this bat we could actually do sideways, so we can actually make him 11 long instead of eight and a half. So we can make him really, really long. We can go like pretty big, which I love because he has a lot of different pieces and we're gonna probably cut this on a really fun vinyl. So we're gonna go ahead and move this over. And then the last one is this, if you're going to be salty, bring the tequila. So again, I'm gonna make this as large as I can to fit on my page. I just need to reduce it a little bit. Now, what I want to do is this one, I actually want to change the colors of a couple parts of it because it's kind of plain and boring just being one color. So if it's a little easier for you, you can hide the images that you're not working on just by clicking the little eyeball. So we're going to just work with this image here. What I'm going to do is duplicate it and I'm just going to move one over so that I can kind of see them separately. Selecting one of the images, I'm gonna click the word contour. I wanna make the word tequila a different color, so all I wanna do is go through and remove all of the other images from the word, like from the design, except the word tequila. So what you could do is either click them here if it's taking a while to load, or what you can also do is kinda of come over here and click all of this stuff to get rid of all the parts that you don't want. So anything that isn't the word tequila, you can just click on to get rid of. So you'll kind of need to look and pay attention to what letters you are kind of getting rid of and where they are on the design. So like that's part of the word tequila, but this isn't. This is part of the word tequila, as is that. So you're just going to kind of need to go through and make sure that you're only getting rid of letters that are not part of the word tequila. Now you can see here if I scroll down this a little bit, if it'll work, it sometimes gets a little stuck. You can see here where the eye was removed already, so I just want to make sure I click that and make sure that that eye doesn't get removed again. So I'm just going to go through and find all of the parts that are not in the word tequila. And this is a pretty fancy one. It's got a lot of pieces and parts, so it may take you a while to really click through. And you could always just have done hide all contours and then just turn tequila back on, but sometimes that doesn't work. Contour has been really, really bad about working lately, so that's why I'm doing it this way, and just going through and clicking all the parts that are definitely not the word tequila. So then I just wanna kinda of make sure that everything looks like it's gone, and I'm gonna get rid of this. Now we may need to make some adjustments, cause you can see how the centers of the A and the Q are filled in, so click contour again, and give it a second to load. This is one of the reasons contour isn't exactly my favorite thing that I've ever done, but it does the job. So what I'm going to do is again, scroll down here. I'm just going to reduce its size. That seems to work better than trying to scroll. This is not exactly like a, a scientific project. It Contour works when it wants to and doesn't when it doesn't. So you can see that it's highlighted. I just clicked the centers of the letters and they're back. Now I'm gonna do this in a fun bright green, so let's go ahead and just choose a random bright green. That looks pretty good. Now, you can just cut the tequila already on your other vinyl if you want to. It's not really going to save you any vinyl by doing that, and then you don't have to sit there and contour it again. Now, I would love to do this little slice here, this little lime slice in a different color maybe. Um, so what I can do, because contour is really being a pain, is just use the shape. I'm just going to use a circle in this case, and all I'm going to do is place my circle on top of my slice of lime, lemon, whatever it may be. In this case, it's a lime. And I'm just going to make sure that it's only covering that lime slice. Select the entire design. Oops. You want to select the circle and the black design. You don't want that green part in there. And just click the word slice. What's kind of cool about that is that it's only going to remove just that little lime or wedge that you want to maybe change its color. So we might change some colors of a few things based on, you know, where I have it laid out. So you can see here that we have this lime wedge now all by itself. So I think I'll go ahead and make that green as well. And I think that's going to look really cute in the green. 
And I think maybe I'll change the color of the word tequila to maybe yellow. And we'll use the same yellow that we're using for the rainbow. And I'm gonna go ahead and send this to the front so that I can see it better. So you can just sort of use slice and um, things like that to kind of change the colors of things that you want. So this drink here, I think I wanna make that a different color as well. So I'm just gonna use the slicing technique again because it was a lot easier than trying to contour. You could slice out the word as well. It's a little bit harder. You need to kind of size it a little bit, but it can be done. So I'm just gonna make sure I cover that and only that. Select the circle and the design again and click slice. So I'm just gonna play with the colors. I'll get everything set up the way I want it and then we can get everything cut out. Now that I have all the colors set, I'm just gonna go ahead and click the eyeballs for the rest of the items that we are going to cut on our vinyl and print so that we can see them and get ready. Now this little bat, I don't wanna do them in black. I'm just gonna make them kind of a random color because I don't wanna do them in black. So I'm just gonna choose like gray. I haven't picked out what color I wanna do just yet. But I'm gonna show you a couple of things really quick before we click make it. So I wanna use the same green for the glass and for the lime wedge that's in my rainbow. But if you're not sure that everything's the same color, they look pretty similar. What you can do is go up to the top of your layers panel and you'll see the word color sync. Now you can see that I have the lime and the glass in this other line and then the green part of the rainbow up in this line. I definitely don't want that, so all I have to do is drag and drop the lime wedge and the glass up into the same color as the rainbow slice. Now everything will be the same color green. You can use this anytime that you want to, it just makes it easier. So now you'll see that we have all these different parts. All I'm gonna do now is click the word make it. Now this might take a minute because this is a lot of information for Cricut Design Space to handle. It can't always get the whole thing down centered. So what I'm gonna do is choose on map because I'm using my Cricut Maker 3 and click done. The next thing that I'm gonna do is take a look at all of the different pieces, parts that we have to work with. So we're gonna need a color for our bat. He's so cute, I can't wait to use him. Then we have the black part for the tequila and remember we're just gonna get rid of this part. Then we have the orange for our rainbow, the yellow for our rainbow, the green, the blue for the love, the little purple heart, the red for the rainbow, and last but not least is our print and cut item. So I'm actually gonna go into the green portion here and while it seems kind of petty, I could save some vinyl by putting my designs inside of my rainbow. You don't have to do that, it's just an option, but I am gonna move them around a little bit so that it's actually not taking up all the top and it's just gonna make a little bit more of a square shape. You can see here too, you could move this around however you wanted to. You could turn it so that it fits inside the rainbow. It's really up to you and how you wanna do it. Me personally, I'm just gonna leave it the way it was. It's fine, but again, this is up to you and you can kind of move things on your mat based on where you want to put them. So now that we're ready to cut, we're going to start with our fun bat. Now he is a lot of pieces, so I'm going to try to find a fun color of Star some StarCraft HD that we can use with our bat and we're just going to cut it on the regular vinyl setting. I chose this super fun pink for the bat and I thought it was just really fun. So all I'm gonna do is load my mat and put it into my machine. What's great about this is that the StarCraft HD cuts super small details really, really, really well. So all I did was just made sure it was well stuck down on my mat, loaded my mat, and then what it's gonna do is measure the size of my mat first, then it will allow me to press the go button and then it will cut everything out. This is a really simple thing that you guys can do, and if you're not using the Maker 3, don't worry, it's not gonna measure your mat. That's one thing about the Maker 3 that I don't really love, but otherwise, it's a really great machine. So let's go ahead and let it cut out all of our vinyl. Now that we've cut out all of our vinyl, we'll need to do the print and cut. So what we're gonna do is click send to printer 
and it may take a second to load. Sometimes it's a little bit slow. It just depends on the day. Um, but once it loads, you're going to want to make sure that you select the correct printer. So I'm going to print this on my Epson ET2720. I'm printing one copy. I will leave the bleed on and we want to use our system dialog. Go ahead and click the word print. Now it's going to take a minute, but it will bring up a printer box that has some information that we're going to use. Once it brings up this box, you're going to want to make sure again that you select the correct printer. So you may need to kind of scroll through your printers if you have more than one. So once I've done that, I'm going to click preferences and then I'm going to do a few setting changes. I'm going to change my quality here from standard to high, and then I'm going to come over here to more options and turn off the high speed print. Then just click OK and click print. It's going to print out on our printer and I'll show you guys it cutting on the machine. Once it's printed out, make sure that you put this on your Cricut mat as straight as possible. I like to actually lay my product over the door of my Cricut. That way it's a little bit easier to line it up. Now I left this in. You'll notice that this loaded off a little bit, just a little bit off center. So when it pulls it in, it's pulling it in at an angle. You want to be really aware of that and make sure that if it does that, that you unload and reload your mat so that you can get it in nice and straight. If this isn't straight, it's going to cut really weird and you don't want that on a print and cut. So what it's doing is it's measuring my mat. The next thing that it's going to do is read all of my lines. So I need to hit the go button and then the sensors will read the lines. It's going to go ahead and read those and then cut around our design and then we'll be able to pull it off of the backing. We're going to be placing our designs onto these clear transparency sheets. You could use acetate, anything clear will really work, but this is what I had on hand. So what I'm going to do is start with our print and cut. So I like to take my pin pen and start peeling my print and cut with my pin pen. I find that works a little bit better for me. Now I will say I know that this did cut a little bit too deep. So another option too is to actually peel the background off and sometimes that can help to peel the sticker itself. I did cut this just a hair deep. I just changed my blade and I didn't remember to put less pressure. So I am getting a little bit of trouble peeling, but I will be able to. You just kind of got to work your way around and find the spot where you can peel it away from the paper backing. So this might take a moment, but I will get it peeled. Okay, now that I've gotten it peeled to where the sticky part is, what I'm going to do is fold my backing just back a little bit. And this is going to help us get it so that we don't have any bubbles in it. So what I'm going to do is kind of figure out where I want this to sit on our transparency sheet. So I think that looks like a good spot. It looks pretty straight, pretty even. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and press this down. And I'm going to take a squeegee and I'm going to do this gently so that I don't scratch my sticker. But what I'm going to do is peel the backing back away from my sticker while using my squeegee to gently press it down. Now you'll see that my sticker does kind of fold over itself so it is hard to see what I'm doing. But I'm just kind of pressing it like this and pushing my sticker down. But again, I'm going slowly, I'm going gently. And this is very slippery so it may just slide a little bit but just kind of keep gently pressing and as you go you'll see that your sticker is sticking to your transparency sheet. I'm going to go ahead and get this one done and then we can apply the vinyl ones. So like I said I did that super gently but that was just to make sure that we didn't end up with any bubbles and now we have this adorable design and you can see that it's blank on the back. But you could always, if you wanted it to be both sided, you could, but for this one, we really don't need it to be. So let's move on and do one of our vinyl ones. So I pre-weeded everything just because I had quite a few things to do, but this is StarCraft HD and it cut really, really nicely with all these small details. We're going to use StarCraft medium tack transfer tape. So what I do is I go ahead and pull that out and then I'm just going to lay my decal down on my transfer tape and I'm going to cut my transfer tape so that I can get my decal off. Now we can reuse this transfer tape as long as it doesn't wrinkle too much or anything like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip this over and I'm going to burnish this down really well. And burnishing just means to rub it down and I always use a rubber squeegee for this. You don't want to use any of those hard metal style ones or hard plastic that can actually damage your vinyl. So once I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. 
and I like to take my backing along with it because I prefer to peel my vinyl from my backing so I like to do it this way so I do it upside down and it works so well so once we've done that we have our decal so again we're gonna put this on a clear piece of transparency film so this one I'm going to do in a landscape direction since our bat is wider than he is long but he'll fit really really nicely now I am going to angle it because I do think it'll look cool and it's gonna fit better if we angle it so I'm just gonna put it down angled and I'm just gonna be careful to make sure that it doesn't stick too much to the sheet down here and we did get a bit of a wrinkle so that's kind of a bummer because this was a really fun one and now I'm sad because I put it down and the vinyl stuck so that happens it's fine not the end of the world what I'm gonna do is just kind of peel it so nobody's perfect it's fine mistakes happen and you can see how well the vinyl likes to stick to this um, transparency film it sticks so well it just takes like a very light touch so what I'm gonna do and it's really loving sticking to this so I'm gonna actually move this out of the way because this is making it even harder I put it down so you guys could see the transparency film a little bit better but all it's doing is just sticking to my uh, transfer tape so what I'm gonna do is just peel this off and I'm gonna fix these bubbles a little bit best I can in some of the spots some of them don't actually have any bubbling in them but that's okay we can fix it where we have it so it's not a big deal. Like this little star's got a little bit of a bubble. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move him once I get everything else kind of set. And this is great transfer tape, but it is really, really good. And it, so it really likes to stick to stuff, which is a good thing. It is a medium style uh, transfer tape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna fix this because we do have a little bit of and we have some stuff that's coming off. Some of it I'm fine with it coming off. That's okay. No big deal. But we do have a couple dots that stayed on, but that's okay. We can totally either fix them or just leave them off. So you can see our ghost has a bit of a like lump in him. You can actually take and use your tweezers. So I'm going to use my Caesars tweezers here. These are really nice tweezers. And I'm just going to kind of work my way under this ghost and just pull up the bottom of him so that I can fix that bubble so we're just gonna kind of work our way you can see I'm just sort of wiggling my tweezers under him and then kind of as I'm going I'm just gonna push the vinyl down with my finger now it may not be completely lined up anymore it's okay not the end of the world and I'll do the same thing for his arm and we'll just sort of wiggle the tweezers out and then just push the arm back down the cat's got a little bit of funk going on in his legs so we'll fix that and press this leg down and then we'll get this leg and like I said these tweezers are great you can just sort of wiggle them under and they really work very very well now the star got misaligned I don't know that I can fix him but he's fine no big deal now if we decide we want to replace any of these dots that we kind of left on the transfer tape just grab them with your pin pen or your tweezers will work too I kind of accidentally flipped that one, so I'm going to grab them with my tweezers. And then you can just kind of stick them back where you think they went just to fill in some space. Again, really up to you. You don't have to. You can see it looks fine without them. But this is just proof nobody's perfect and mistakes happen. But I think that still came out really cute. You can totally tell it's a bat and it was really fun. I'm a little bummed that I got it stuck to it, but it happens. So there's our bat. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these together. And then I can show you what they look like in the bag. Here is our LED bag. This is such a fun product. And what I love is that you can change the colors on it. So if you just press the button, you can go from red, green, blue, kind of a yellowy green, aqua, purple. Then you have a light blue. It flashes. Then it also flashes between the colors in a couple of different like speeds, which is awesome. And then you can just turn it off. But for this, we'll leave it on green, just because I think green's really pretty. So let me tuck the charger and stuff out of the way 
and I'm going to show you these transparencies that we made so that you can change out your bag. Now I do have a roll of transfer tape sitting in the bottom of the bag just to hold it up so that you guys can see this better. But all you have to do is just slide your transparency into the bag and it will just kind of sit right there. And you have this adorable little interchangeable design. You can use a little piece of tape to hold it in and it's really fun because you can use it with both vinyl and with printables. So I'll show you a couple of the vinyl ones we did. I loved this one. I think this one came out super cute. So fun. If you're going to be salty, bring the tequila. And I just think these are a fun bag that you don't just have to use for Halloween, but you can use them for girls trips, for parades, for events, super fun. And then this is one of the printable ones that we did that I thought was really fun. And I just love how it comes out. It looks so bright, so fun. And this is such a cool way that you can really tie this bag into lots of events. These would be great for school events as well. And then the last one that we did, we did this little bat and we did him sideways so he's a little bit wider than he is tall so I'll go ahead and slide him in isn't he fun I love 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 how this guy came out so fun so easy to do I'll move you guys down a little bit so you can see him better but this was a simple easy project and again all I did was take some little transparency sheets and then I just added the designs to them whether I used vinyl or printable and you can really make your own designs to go inside your bag. And that way you're not having to buy multiple bags for multiple events. If you guys have any questions about this or any of the other things that we've done here on the channel, please let me know in those comments down below. I'll make sure to link all of the products that we used down in the description. If you can't see the description, just make sure to click the little down arrow right next to the video right below it and you'll be able to find all of our links and information. I hope you guys have so much fun. Have a great day and happy crafting. <music>